If you're coming from part 1 of this series, you've seen how we were able to set up a scanner which objectively gives us the highest premium puts on a week to week basis. And if you haven't seen part 1, now's a good time to go back and check it out so you'll be on the same page with us as we go through this video. So we've now got this great list of potential trade ideas, but how do we separate the good trades from the bad ones? Let's get into it. Welcome back to the Hourglass Trader, where as time passes, we make money. All right, so getting back into it, we'll remember that to pull up our scan, we're gonna go to the scan tab. And since we already created and saved this, we could go to load scan query personal and go to high ROR puts, and it'll put all the filters in that we've saved from the last video that we set up. Now, when we run this scan, there's gonna be a lot of different names, a lot of different options that are gonna pop up on here. One thing that I do wanna filter out for this video is gonna be options that have earnings because a lot of the time that's gonna be what drives premium and it is a little bit of a waste of time if you're looking at this long list and you don't really know which options do or do not have earnings. So to load that in, we have another one that we've set up that filters out the earnings. And if you want the actual links that we share so you could load all of our personal ones into your Thinkorswim module as well, those are going to be on our website in the options scanner section. They're going to have links to all of these filters that we have pre-saved and set up that we could bring in whenever we want. And this is going to be an area where we'll be adding a lot of different scanners over the next few weeks or so, so keep an eye on that. But back to uh, what we're going through, we've got this scan, it filters out companies that do not have earnings. So we know that everything we're looking on here is just pure premium. Now there are a few general rules that I like to follow when I do this. And the first is going to be the golden rule that we never want to sell puts on a stock that we don't want to own at that price. Now. I guess maybe a little bit of a caveat there is that, you know, just because it's not the greatest stock in the world, there are some stocks that are not the greatest companies, but I'd be comfortable owning them at a certain price. And that's something that we'll come across as we go through the results of this scan. And then another quick rule is that typically I want to avoid biotech stocks because they can move up and down in the blink of an eye. And with our HT wheel strategy, that kind of volatility, the downward movement in a stock can really outpace uh, the speed at which we could lower our break even price so it renders our strategy kind of ineffective so that's an area that we like to avoid when we're doing things like this uh, so let's just go top to bottom and go through the typical process that we'll walk through when we're taking a look at our scanner whether it's on a weekend during the week while the market's going uh, as we try to figure out what of these options that we have here are actually good legitimate trade ideas in the context of a smart, consistent, and profitable option selling strategy. So right at the top of the list, we have SAVA. So we'll type that in and take a look at the chart for Cassava Sciences. And as you'll see, the premium is there for good reason because this thing dropped from 126 down to 57 in the course of about 10 days. So kind of like what we just mentioned with these biotech stocks, they can move so, so, so quickly. Let's back it up to the one year. I mean, less than a year ago today, this stock was trading at 278, peaked at 146 before these huge red candles gapped it down to about 70, back up to 120 and back to 58. And obviously when you have that kind of movement, there's gonna be some really good premium in the options, but this type of volatility can ruin you to the downside and leave you holding a pretty big bag. And that's something we definitely want to avoid uh, with the plays that we pursue in the context of this strategy. So this one, just based off the chart alone and the fact that it's a biotech stock, healthcare stock, uh, this is not going to be the type of trade that we're looking for in these scans. Now, these are the types of trades that will come up a lot because this type of movement breeds premium and inherently gives a high ROR on a week to week basis. But we need to be smart. We need to not gamble. We need to not chase just the highest number we see every week and keep moving down the list. Uh, New Egg, getting further down the list here, is not a healthcare stock. But let's do the first thing that we do when we take a look at these and pull up the chart for New Egg because we see that 19 strike puts, 18 strike puts are offering 10.95 and 7.27% return on capital risk, uh, respectively. So if we'll type in New Egg up here. This is the one year chart and you know the one year or the 180 day, I typically prefer the 180 day. Uh, these are great places to start when you're evaluating these candidates. Uh, what we like to see is a stock that has some sort of longer term support level that it's trading near. And as we see, there's an initial level of support between December and uh, roughly the end of January into this year around the three to $5 level. Uh, and then we have a little bit longer term level of support around the $10 area, as you'll see it shot between 9 and 10 uh, for about the six months following January this year. 
Now, this one has a ton of premium because you'll see it spiked up to 79 bucks at the peak back on July 7th. But since then, it's fallen back to about 20. And if we look at these options, yeah, these are great numbers on a week to week basis that you could be pulling some really nice percent returns. But the fact that it's been dropping so rapidly, the fact that longer term support is in the 10 and then beyond that in the three to five area, this really isn't something I would want to own at this price level. So that violates that first rule that we outlined where we always want to be selling options on stocks that we're comfortable owning at that certain price. If I were selling 18, 19, 17 strike puts, this is not the chart of a stock that I would be comfortable with owning at 17 bucks a share because you know, a $7 drop down to 10 bucks a share would leave us sitting with a pretty big loss for the time being. And that's something that's definitely a possibility based off the price action that we've seen right there. So, so far, SAVA, NEGG, we could cross those off the list as being good investment ideas. And, you know, sometimes it is a little bit frustrating because you have to be patient as you go down this list to try to find a good opportunity because you'll run into a lot of charts, quite frankly, that look like this that come up at the top of this scan. Uh, we could take a look at one that I know is going to be a good investment idea. If we scroll down a little bit here, we get to FFIE. And did we have to go through every single one of these off the bat? I mean, some of these stocks we've been familiar with because we cover a lot of these in our Discord server and just in our week to week analysis for what trades we're considering entering into. Uh, but FFIE is an example of one that came up here 4.05% return on risk at a nine strike. So let's pull up the chart for FFIE. And what we know about this one is it is a former SPAC, meaning that it had that price floor idea of net asset value right around $10 a share. Uh, and since the merger, if we, I think we have it backed up as much as we can. Yeah, this is a post merger, July 22nd. It was trading at about 20 bucks a share. A quick side note, this is why we never advise going in on a former SPAC above net asset value because after the merger, we see this type of price action a lot. But once it begins to approach that former price floor at $10 a share, some of these become decent investment opportunities because the severe drop from in 20 in this case down to about the nine or $10 price level puts some really decent premium into the options. And another point that I wanna make here about our scan, and I guess the first point being that it's back around this 10 level, I think we have a decent entry point as opposed to something like uh, Newegg where if we had that chart pulled up, it's trading above where there's you know any sort of support. We'll go over to FI, FFIE, excuse me, and it's trading down around what we perceive to be a support level at nine or 10 bucks a share. So decent entry here, uh, not a healthcare stock. This fits the bill as something we think might be a good idea to enter into for this upcoming week. So let's take a look at the options chain. And the point that I was beginning to try to make is that when we go to our scanner on FFIE, we see that a nine strike put is what comes up on the scanner because it's offering 4.05% return a week. But just because that's the single highest option on there and the nine put is what comes up here in the description on our scanner doesn't mean that we have to sell the nine strike put. If something is showing up here on our scanner, it just means in general that that ticker is a good idea to be selling options on because if we take a look beyond the nine strike, we go for something safer like an eight and a half strike put or an eight strike put, we'll still see some really nice ROR numbers. Uh, and while that 4.05% is what came up in our scan, if you look at the 8.5 or the eight, you can still get 2.1 or 1.27% return on risk in a week. And for those of you who might be starting to dip your toes into the option selling world coming from an option buying background, uh, you might say 1.27% uh, a week, that is a terrible return, that's nothing. When I was buying options, I'd see people get 200 or 300% returns. And while that does happen sometimes, those people who are buying options who pursue those big returns are also risking an insane amount of capital to do so. And typically it does not turn out very well for them. And that's why we sell options over here. But to put things in perspective for you about how impressive a 1.27% return is on a weekly basis, we could hop back to our website. We have under tools, we have an annualization calculator. And if you throw in a week time frame, because that's what this trade would be for uh, one week, a 1.27% return, 1.27% return, annualizes to 93.10%. So basically, if you could find options like this that pay out 1.27% a week, and you could find opportunities like that week after week after week, 
uh, in theory, you'd be pulling 93.1% a year, you'd be doubling your money. And we could do this sometimes ridiculous exercise of saying, hey, if you started with $10,000 in your account and you got a 1.27% return every week, you'll have a quarter of a million dollars five years from now. So these are the ideas, the annualization concepts, you know, compounding these returns week after week, month after month, year after year. This is the kind of thing that we want to keep in mind as we're identifying plays like this. So while we might say, you know, the nine's a little bit riskier and remembering that anything above the strike that we sell is max profit, right? You still get a decent cushion uh, with the nine strike puts, but you get an even bigger cushion at eight and a half or at eight, and you still get a respectable return at 1.27. It's just the important part here is when you're going through these scanners and maybe selecting something further down the chain, keeping in mind what a good uh, consistent annualized return figure is, right? So with that in mind, we think from the result of this scan that entering into an 8.5 or an eight strike put is a really nice value because you know we can close the loop here by continuing out the thought process. If we sold an eight strike put for 10 cents a piece, that's gonna be halfway between the bid and the ask of five and 15 cents. You're gonna have a break even price of 790. Or if we plot that on the chart here, 790, close enough. I mean, we'll see it's a price that it's never traded at. Uh, we zoom in on the five or the 20 day chart rather you have to zoom out on the y-axis to get down to that break-even price. And as long as it stays above that break-even price for the next five trading days, you're gonna hit that max profit of 1.27%. So these setups that we have with this option selling, when we utilize these results from our scan, give us some seriously big cushions on these trades, right? Because it's trading at $9.63 as of market close on Friday, but if we take our beautiful system, our PC system calculator here, uh, we'll see that a drop from 9.63 down to 7.90 is a $1.73 cushion, which divided by the closing price on Friday of 9.63, we'll see that you have a 17.9% cushion uh, over the next five trading days on this stock. So in plain English, what that means is if you sell this eight strike put, as long as the stock doesn't drop 17.96% in the next five trading days, you're gonna make money and that is an insane downside cushion, some insane value. And that is why we like to use scans like this to dig up these types of trade opportunities that offer really nice returns on an annualized basis uh, and give us positions where they're relatively low stress because we can you know, weather the storm if the stock decides to drop 20% on us. So FFIE, that's one good example. Uh, another good one that we have come up on here is uh, CLOV, and I'm not sure where exactly it was. We could sort it by, we sort it alphabetically. There it is. Uh, the 8.5 strike puts are showing up because they pull 3.6%. And this is gonna be another example. We talked about two with SAVA and NEGG, where I think, you know, these aren't great opportunities. Uh, since we talked about one good opportunity with FFIE, let's talk about one more good opportunity with CLOV. So we would see if we went through our scan that CLOV shows up at the 8.5 strike puts at 3.6% return on risk. And knowing what we know about ROR, 3.6%, 3.6 is a huge number annualized, right? I mean, this is hilarious because you're not going to pull 532% a year and turn $10,000 into $100 million. But the idea behind that 3.6% return is that, you know, it's a really big number. You might think, oh, 3.6, that's not huge, especially if you're someone coming from that option buying background that we talked about. But anytime you could set yourself up in a position where the annualized return is 532%, that is a monster number. So we're going to take a look at that. We're going to pull up CLOV on the chart. Step one of our diligence here is we try to figure out if this is a good trade idea or not. We're going to remove these really quickly. And we'll see that it closed at 858. So an 850 strike put is really kind of pushing it as far as a cushion is concerned. But remembering what we just talked about with FFIE, we don't necessarily need to pick the highest returning one because if we look at the whole option chain, there you go. We could find that the eight strike put is offering 1.39% on a weekly basis. And you know between the 10 cent bid and the 12 cent ask, we could assume that those are going for about 11 cents a piece, which the eight strike minus 11 cents of premium would give you a 789 break even price. And that's something we could plot right here. So, uh, you know, this is a little different than FFIE because uh, at some point last week on August 19th and August 20th, it did dip below that. 
But if we back up to that 180 day chart that we like to look at so much and extend this out to the left, we'll see there's decent support in this area, right? I mean, between the time frame of about July 15th and August 11th, so for about a whole month, it kept bouncing off this $8 price level. And can this one get back below it? Absolutely, there's precedent for it to get back down to seven a share. But knowing what we know and having played this stock so many times, we love to play it around that eight level. Anytime we get an opportunity to play it around that eight level, we like to do so. And anytime we have the opportunity at that eight level to pull something like a 1.39% return on risk, that's the type of trade that we like to get into. So that's another one that we're gonna have our eye on as we head into the week. So in short, that is how we interpret the results of these scans, right? I mean, we have 690 different results on here. So there's a lot of information to sift through. There's so many different opportunities, so many different stocks, so many different setups. So even if you at home are watching this video and saw what we said about FFIE and CLOV and said, you know what? those setups, those stocks, those might not be for me. There are so many different tickers that you could go on here and that's the value of having a scanner like this because if you have 690 different high premium options on here on a weekly basis, you're bound using this quick process that we just outlined in this video, you are bound to find some good opportunities. So in short, after setting up this scanner, this is how you go through the list that it provides you with and this is how you use our scanner to sort out the good trades from the bad trades. Uh, you know, emphasizing again the fact that just because something shows up on here like an SAVA or an NEGG doesn't mean that it's a good investment idea. It's important to take things a step or two further, go through the process that we just outlined in this video and determine which of these in the context of our safe, consistent and profitable option selling strategies are the best options to put into play on a week to week basis. So if you've made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we stream every Sunday night on YouTube and Twitch. So if you can give us a follow on there, subscribe on here if you haven't yet, that would be super, super helpful. We also have a free Discord server where it is free to join, discuss, and learn the strategies that we put into play. One more shameless piece of self-promotion is that we've launched HT Premium where you could get trade alerts for free in our Discord server. We alert every single trade, opening and closing, as we make them, and we've had some really, really nice success so far this year doing so. Additionally, you'll get access to our live watch list, which has stocks that we're looking at with our entry targets and notes on every single one that we have on here. And as discussed a little earlier, an option scanner section, which we are quickly gonna be building out over the next couple of weeks to include a lot more more than what we've just discussed in these last two videos. So definitely feel free to drop by and join our Discord server if you wanna join part of the conversation. And if you have made it to the end of the video past my shameless self-promotion, thank you so, so, so much. We are gonna sign off from this the way that we sign off from all of our videos saying, this has been the Hourglass Trader where as time passes, we make money.